Well, let's continue the discussion with someone who is skeptical of the crypto space. That's to say the least. Angel investor Liran Shapira uh, joins us this morning. And, and Liran, you know, before we get to some of the concerns that you've had in the space, worth noting in full transparency that um, you are part of a crypto skeptic group uh, that has taken short positions in crypto. So, so let's start there. I mean, to what extent have you benefited from the declines that we have seen over the last few weeks? Uh, you know, I've benefited significantly uh, because I've been shorting Bitto, the Bitcoin futures ETF. I've been shorting Coinbase, MicroStrategy, Silvergate Bank. And, you know, the collapse has already happened to the degree of 70 or 80 percent from the peak. And that is, uh, you know, putting uh, significant money in our pockets as crypto skeptics. Now, you are a skeptic now, but you started kind of early on to say that you, you thought that things could work out. You were an early investor um, in Coinbase as well. What shifted for you? Yeah, so the original thesis was very visionary, you know, Bitcoin, decentralized currency. Um, and it really just was a matter of, you know, seeing how how little success was happening. And also just thinking about the macroeconomic considerations, as I became more educated, I was like, look, the vision is basically to move to the gold standard, right? That's the vision of Bitcoin. That's the idea of a limited currency with no central bank. And frankly, we have tried that, right? We didn't try it with a blockchain, but we tried it with gold. And it, it just doesn't make sense as a currency, which is why you're not actually seeing it used as a currency. You're only seeing it used for speculation. We've been talking so much about the crypto space as a whole, but there's been plenty of guests we've had on who say, look, this is a time to kind of differentiate between Bitcoin and Ether. Those are the more established crypto assets versus some of these other tokens we've been talking about, including FTT that was issued by FTX. Do you see the differentiation there or is this time to raise the red flag on crypto as a whole? So Bitcoin is kind of the ex exception because it has this vision of being this decentralized currency with no central bank. It's a vision that I think is harmful and would lead to a depression, but at least it is a logically coherent vision. Now, if you look at FTT, if you look at all these other, this explosion of tokens and these projects, you know, blockchain, Web3, all this other stuff that's grown around outside of Bitcoin in, in this token ecosystem, it's all logically incoherent. There is absolutely no reason why any of this stuff is ever going to create net value for society or for the economy. It's all basically just an excuse to play casinos and speculate. And, you know, we've had uh, John Reed Stark on before. He's obviously a former SEC enforcement division. As I understand it, he's part of this crypto skeptic group that you have increasingly tried to organize. What's the end game? of this group? What are you trying to achieve? Is it about maintaining you know, crypto, but also bringing in the regulation to make sure customers aren't left holding the bag? Or is it to sort of see the space as a whole just kind of burn out and collapse? So, you know, part of it is we did call the crypto collapse. I mean, we think it's inevitable because we did recognize a speculation bubble. But part of it is, as you say, we do want to do our part to help with the lobbying. I mean, you have so many companies that are lobbying pro crypto, right? You have investors like Andreessen Horowitz. They really want all this regulation to enable this new crypto space. But all you're getting out of it is you're seeing U.S. based retail investors losing their life savings into these schemes and you know hypothetically the regulation is supposed to stop that but there's really there's no upside to even enabling all the stuff in the first place so what's the next shoe to fall you think if you call the collapse of this or at least the bursting of the bubble what are you watching next yeah there's major contagion in the crypto space so you know, Silvergate Bank is something that doesn't get discussed enough. It's basically the only connection to uh, fiat banking that the crypto system has, and deposits are being pulled out of that. So that may collapse, I'm sure, at Silvergate Bank. Um, and you might see Nexo, which is a crypto lending platform. That could be the next FTX. You know, it's another centralized crypto lending platform, but it, it could be anything. It could be Bitfinex and Tether. These things have a way of all intermingling right behind the scenes. You can't tell what's going on, but the dominoes just fall one after the other. What about somebody like Binance? I mean, as we've shown, uh, CZ, who's founder and CEO there, and he's been taking a bit of a victory lap. Obviously, uh, their rival, FTX, has now collapsed. I mean, is this a platform that you think customers sh should feel comfortable in, or do you see red flags there too? 
major red flags, you know, good for CZ for being one of the last ones standing, right? But that also just means he's the next domino to fall. Like there's there's no positive indication that Binance isn't pulling all the same shady tactics that we've seen from all of these centralized crypto players. I mean, ba based on what? what? What have you seen that, that leads you to make that statement? So one thing is their balance sheet also has the same red flags where there's a lot of their own tokens on their balance sheet. So the, the accounting is already fuzzy just from that. And so you think the same thing could happen the way it did with FTX? I do think the contagion will eventually call, come from Binance, and it's hard to time who's going first. But every time a domino falls, it you know makes it harder for the next domino to stay standing, right? It, it pokes more holes in the balance sheets. Uh, finally, you know, we have seen um, those like Jeremy Lair over at Circle calling for more regulation. He's talking specifically about stable coins. But the argument has also been that because U.S. regulators have been so slow to move, so much of U.S. US based trading has been pushed to offshore exchanges like FTX, like Binance. And that's what ultimately caused all this, that regulators are also to blame because they didn't move quickly enough. Do you agree with that thesis? Well, you know, you can you can say it got pushed offshore and it was outside of US regulation, but the thing is that's where all the fun is, right? So you have Coinbase to their credit, they are regulated, they're not going to lose anybody's money probably, but they're boring, right? All the good stuff is happening offshore. That's the reason why people get into crypto because they want to make the kind of leverage speculative bets that these casinos like FTX and Binance are, you know, they're better at facilitating. Angel investor Liron Shapira, it's good to talk to you today. Appreciate your time. Great to be here.